important, whether you're advocating for yourself or for someone else, to get it in writing. Note who you have talked to, their position, when you talk to them, and as precisely as you can the details of the conversation you had. Don't be afraid to ask for clarification if something seems unclear to you. One way to do this is by a follow-up letter where you uh, summarize the details of your discussion and ask for confirmation that your understanding of the situation is correct. And it's important that things are being put in writing and that they're clarified for families. I, I certainly believe that. And so when, when you're in situations that are, are emotional, um, you get a little bit nervous. You tend to forget what has been said and what's gone on. So uh, for me as an advocate to sit at a meeting and take notes, I think is a good idea. It's helpful. If you have exhausted all the appropriate avenues in the civil service, you may wish to contact your elected representative. In Nova Scotia, community services are a provincial responsibility, so it is your member of legislature, your MLA, that you should contact. What I have found in, in party politics in Canada is that uh, the representative, the local representative, um, by and large has different loyalties than, than the average citizen thinks. Um, for example, I work very hard representing my constituents and I'm willing to take the lumps of speaking out on behalf of my constituents. But um, most politicians who are more successful at this business than I am, I think try and balance a little better the constituency with the party. And in fact, the balance, I think, has gone too far the other way so that uh, the representative doesn't speak out as much on behalf of their constituents and toes the party line. And so you always have to be aware of that uh, in terms of dealing with your representative. If your representative is a backbencher um, on the government side who's willing to speak out, um, then he or she is able to do a few things that uh, perhaps a opposition member can't do, both speak out and also lobby internally. If they're an opposition member, they're quite willing to speak out and, and, and so you can get the, the airplay, the media play that way. If they're a cabinet minister on the government side, then probably the best you're going to get from them is internal lobbying and, and uh, they're not going to be able to speak out uh, publicly on your behalf. Uh, beyond that, of course, you, you have to realize um, that uh, you may be speaking to one MLA who may be agreeing with your perspective, but he or she has to convince his colleagues or her colleagues uh, to agree, and, and um, then they have to convince the Premier's office to agree, and uh, then they have to convince the civil servants to agree. Possibly uh, you've exhausted all your avenues of appeal, and the the programs in place are just not uh, adequate to address your needs. And if that's the case, a well-written letter, either by you or somebody uh, that is a friend that could be of assistance, goes a long ways towards uh, getting government or the department involved in it to look at their policies and to see if there's something more that, that could be done. A letter is seen to represent, I've heard various figures, 100 to 200 people who don't speak out. So all of us as, as politicians will get form letters cranked off with someone's signature on the bottom. They get sometimes a little more uh, elaborate and, and they put them through a word processor and, and, and put the names on the bottom. But we know it's a form letter. Um, it's much, much better for the person to put in their own words if uh, the group that they're part of has sent out some information, a sample letter. Take that letter, but don't use that letter. Take the information and in put it in your own words, add in your own little touch, and then mail it. Petitions uh, are not very helpful either in that sense uh, because uh, what we found as politicians is that anyone can take a petition, put it in the corner store, and you'll be amazed that people will sign it without even looking at it. Letters to the editor are very, very helpful. Again, they need to be in your own words uh, because they do press clippings. All the politicians, particularly those in cabinet uh, uh, and in the premier's office, they get a list of press clippings that's cut out from the papers of, of comments that were made on various topics. They're all headed as to what departments is applicable to or what MLA. And so, and letters get included in that press clipping. So letters to the editor are very, very important as well. Um, so of, of those three, a personal letter and a letter to the editor, but, but put in your own words, not a form letter. We have a, a family of uh, th three boys. Um, 
two of them are totally normal quotation marks and, uh, and live with, in a marriage situation with their own families. Um, our third son, Peter, unfortunately, um, suffered uh, either at birth or during birth from some brain damage, which we tried to have analyzed and could never really get to the bottom of, but it resulted in the early years of his life having terrible speech impediment. He was unable to be understood. Um, it, his language was garbled, um, so the people often made fun of him but more so when he went to school. Um, uh, when he reached the school age, he, he came home one day and said to his mother, Mother, I, I just can't handle school. So he has never been able to properly read. He just guesses at words, doesn't have comprehension, has great difficulty with understanding numbers, like a hundred to him is no different from a thousand or ten thousand. He can't uh, read a watch with normal hands. He has to use a digital watch. And we keep thinking of it in terms of what will happen when we're not here, because, you know, we're both getting, we're both senior citizens and um, a anything can happen at that age. Um, so that uh, our biggest worry is what will eventually happen to Peter. Letters come in from Nova Scotians to me as Minister of Community Services. First of all, they go to the appropriate section in the Department of Community Services where the staff that have the greatest knowledge about what the letter's about try to provide some briefing notes and maybe a suggested response for me. Then it comes to me with a suggested response. I read the letter, I read the response. I decide whether I think that the response is reasonable and I would sign that letter or if it should be sent back for further consideration. The thing you have to remember is that, that MLAs and MPs are very, very busy people. They have lots of different demands. An issue that you're passionate about, and I'm passionate about several issues, so uh, um, the campaigns that I'm on, uh, to me when I'm involved in that campaign, that's the whole, that's the whole, the sun rises and sets on that issue. And, and most people who are passionate want to change things for, for the better, uh, have that same viewpoint. But the MLA or the MP, and particularly the civil servants that the MLA MP has to work with, this is just one issue amongst many issues. So you need to always bear that in mind. And in a, in a, a polite way, keep coming back to the MLA, keep coming back to the MP. Uh, anything worth changing and doing is going to take effort. And if, it's, if you're not willing to put in the effort at the start, uh, then um, you might as well save yourself the time.